Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Mesh Seibel, and welcome. This is brought to you by My Menopause Magazine. Now, one thing that people care about is good kissing. They care about beautiful lips, and we talk about lips and kissable around Valentine's Day, but of course, there's always the Blarney, there's always the mistletoe at New Year's. There's always a good reason for having great kissable lips. And what we want to talk about today is having kissable lips every day. And so here to do that is Dr. Janet Prystowski. And she is a dermatologist. She's a board certified dermatologist in Manhattan and has been working at her craft for some 25 years to do uh, many things, but among them is to create some beautiful and kissable lips. And here she's going to talk to us a little bit about what you can be doing to improve the quality of your mouth, face, and lips. And so to do that, first of all, let me just ask you, um, how big of an issue is the mouth and the lips and so forth as a cosmetic issue to women? How much do women worry about this? And uh, just let's start right there. Well, I think women are very concerned about how their mouth looks and uh, how their lips look. Uh, certainly, uh, every time you look in the mirror, you're looking at your lips. So, uh, But I think as far as the oral hygiene part goes, if you've got the, the prettiest lips in the world, but as soon as you open your mouth, it's you know there's a lot of uh, unattractive teeth and they haven't been brightened and that sort of thing, uh, mm -hmm. it really detracts. So you do have to start with a good oral hygiene uh, regimen, and if your teeth are crooked, you might want to get those straightened with Invisalign or something similar, um, and get your teeth, teeth uh, bleached. You know, you just can't ignore, you can't ignore what's in the mouth and just depend on the lips. To be so, attractive. if you're trying to have good oral hygiene, I know we're supposed to brush our teeth every day, twice a day at least, so maybe I could just get you to say one, two, three quickly, what's good oral hygiene so that people are taking care of their mouth? Because uh, many times uh, the mouth is a source of infection and it can also, from my point of view as a women's health specialist, I'm always worried about the teeth as an indication of osteoporosis is an early sign of that. But, and we're not going to focus on this, but just if there's one or two things you can tell women for um, oral hygiene. Okay, well, I always get a good grade when I see my dentist, so I'll tell you what I do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that is I, I brush my teeth twice a day, I usually spend about five minutes uh, each time. I use an electric toothbrush because that uh, cleans better than a regular toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I always use one of those little picks with a little rubber tip mm -hmm. and go in between all the teeth because it's amazing how even with a good brushing, you get skip areas of little bits of food and particles and you want to really get those out because if those are in there all the time, it just makes your gums get bad and... Mm -hmm. um, they'll start bleeding and you have all sorts of problems. That's then, those little rubber cone, like cone shaped yeah. things you put between the teeth yeah, and get the circulation go going. And rinse it off and go inside all mm -hmm. around. <clears throat> and uh, then, then the uh, next thing is you do need to floss. Even with that, you're not going to get everything in between the teeth. Mm -hmm. Now I must confess, I don't floss every day, but I think if you floss two or three times a week, and you do a really good flossing, that's probably adequate as long as you're doing the pick thing every day. I think between the teeth is kind of like the belly button. When you start poking around there, you're amazing what comes out of it. Right. And the thing is, if you don't see it and little bits of food get stuck, and that's what the bacteria eat. Right. So, Absolutely. so that, that's my regimen. Um, I'm, I don't uh, generally think you need to do, use mouthwash, but there's no problem if you like that. Um, okay, go for it. Yeah. So the second thing is, is now there are probably some things that can enhance. Women, of course, are putting lipstick and lip gloss and all kinds of things on their lips all the time. And I mean, you go into a beauty uh, store or any of the areas of any department store or drugstore. I mean, there's rows and rows. You go into Sephora, any of the other uh, places where cosmetics are sold. There's rows of lipstick colors and so forth. What, what can you tell women about the things they put on their lips? Okay, well, well, let's start with what the goal is, right? I mean, Absolutely. Goal, right. You want soft, supple, plump, and lips with some color. They want to, you know, they need to look a little red, you know? Mm -hmm. So so to do that, uh, you're going to end up um, having to use moisturizing products. You might need uh, a lip balm. 
Uh, if you overuse lip balms, though, sometimes you can get allergic to them and have problems. But mm -hmm. a simple lip balm, like just Aquaphor or plain Vaseline, works very well if your lips are dry. You certainly have to protect them before you go outside in the really cold weather around Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. at least up in the northeast where I am. And uh, then after that, you know, for color, obviously you're going to need some lipstick. So that's where you end up at the beauty counter. And yeah. so a lot of you need a little help uh, from the ladies behind the counter to get the right color. You may need to use a lip liner as well if your lips are a little thin. But, of course, if your lips are thin, that leads you into, hmm, maybe we want to volumize them instead of just painting lips on <laughs> that go outside the board. Right. Sometimes that looks a little artificial, right? So then you may want to go to your dermatologist or your plastic surgeon and uh, speak to them about how to volumize your lips. And that could be a number of different fillers that we use. Uh, obviously, you need to be cautious not to overdo it um, or you'll look rather strange. Uh, we've all seen people walking up and down <clears throat> some of the avenues in New York who've uh, clearly overdone it. But uh, there are many uh, products that you can do to just help increase the size of the little, little, uh, you know, little uh, pillows here, we call them, mm -hmm. putting a little bit in there. The corners of the mouth as you get towards the menopause age start to turn down. That looks kind of funny. So you can certainly put some fillers in to kind of keep your, your lips even across. Uh -huh. And, uh, all, all that will help to improve the appearance of the lips so that when you actually put the lipstick on, you know, you've got a bigger surface area and they'll look more uh, poofy and plump and Yeah, the pickable. Angelina Jolie <laughs> type of thing where she yes. has that beautiful uh, mouth. So yeah, how does it work? Restore the cupid's bow because as you, as you get towards menopause, if you'll notice, this, this whole t upper lip starts to flatten and you lose this cupid bow. You know, you want that little bow maintained. Mm -hmm. And so if you've lost your cupid bow, you definitely want to uh, seek some, some assistance if, you know, if it's something that you're interested in pursuing. And, and how does a woman, uh, what's the procedure involved? I mean, is this a uh, uh, injections or how does it happen? Okay, so normally they're injections. The most commonly used product in the lips is hyaluronic acid, and there are a number of companies that make different brands of it. Sometimes we inject going right up the filtrum, and that will help to lift up the little cupid bow. A lot of times we'll add a little bit around the edges here so that you don't have that frowny look. You mm -hmm. start evening out again. And then sometimes we'll actually go all along the lip line to just enhance and, and bring things out a bit. So... Uh, that, those are the main injection sites. And then if you've really gotten a fallen lip, uh, then we put a little bit up in here and in here. To and that will lift. help lift it, lift it up, and it'll look great. Now, if you've got lots of wrinkles also going across, uh, then you may want to have some laser resurfacing to sort of tighten that up a bit so that you don't look uh, like, you know, the smoker's lines and that sort of thing right. is very attractive. So we want to try to address that as well if that's present. Is this done one time or is this done and, you know, how long does it last once you do it? Well, it depends on what's injected. If you're injecting a hyaluronic acid product, uh, mm -hmm. they're FDA approved for using around the lips, you might get three to six months uh, worth of uh, time on those mm -hmm. injections. And then sometimes there's some off-label uses of other injectables. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, silicone is not an approved injectable uh, for enhancing beauty but uh, has been used for decades. Uh, and if it's done correctly and safely, uh, you know, with uh, someone who's skilled, I, I think that, that that has some advantages because uh, it is a permanent filler, and so uh, you get uh, clearly a more la uh, lasting result from it. Right. Well, so what we've learned from talking with you is that mm -hmm. it's important to start with some simple oral hygiene you want to take care of your mouth and teeth get the stains mm -hmm. off straighten your teeth if you choose and mm -hmm. of course keep your teeth and gums clean the right. second thing is that there's a number of products to place on the lips that you can find out at the beauty counter ranging from lipstick to vaseline and many things in between and mm -hmm. if you want to enhance things even further you can go with some cosmetic procedures that can be done to right. inject the cupid's bow as you called it here to cause this to lift up or go in underneath or to expand the width of your lips from below or above and this lasts for three to six months and then if necessary you can do like the shampoos rinse and repeat so if you have to do it again uh, you can right. and um, 
and this can allow you to have a fuller lips, uh, fresher breath and face, and also, of course, it's something on your face, so enhancing self-esteem and turn some heads that the one you really want to turn, of course, is your own. So when you look in your mirror, you say, I like the right. way you look. Absolutely. Now, if you want to get in touch with you to get more information, uh, mm -hmm. you're at uh, Janet Prystowski, uh, MD com. I'm going to spell that. Actually, it's Dr. P, right? At yeah. Janet Prystowski. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Give me, give me your, your, it's Janet, Janet, it's J-A-N-E-T, Prystowski is P-R-Y-S-T-O-W-S-K-Y. MD.com. That's correct. That's the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can go there to get more information. And again, Dr. Prystowski is located in Manhattan. I want to thank you very much for taking time to talk with me about kissable lips, very important subject to millions of women. I'm your host, Dr. Mesh Seibel. And this is brought to you by My Menopause Magazine. And you can go to MyMenopauseMagazine.com. You can check it out in the Apple Newsstand on, on Google Play. And remember, it's better to stay well than to get well.